John Q new names in the squads and uh, Sam Hunt's back in the squad. There's obviously a lot of speculation that uh, maybe he was going to go play for Hungary. Um, can you talk about the conversations you have with him and his commitment and him be back in the squad? Oh, look, it was very straightforward. Um, obviously, it was one of the first games I went to as well. I went to watch Blackburn Millwall and obviously Michael Obafemi was playing as well. But no, any of the conversations I've had with Sammy, uh, they were all straightforward. And uh, look, he's he's buzzing. He's delighted, to, uh, obviously, to be coming in, and it's great to have a player in <clears throat> such good form consistently all season too. You know, and he's he's got that versatility in terms of um, where he's kind of playing at the minute as well. He's he's floating from a striker into like a, a ten position too. So he's he's uh, look as I said, it's great to have an option like that to bring into the squad. It's really good. What about the other two on cap players, Finn Azaz and Jake O'Brien? Yeah, look, Finn, obviously I know from working with him uh, with the under 21s, and uh, he was having a great season with Plymouth, and then he's obviously got signed by Middlesbrough, and uh, he's doing really well, scored a couple of goals for them as well. Um, really good, creative, technical option for us um, going forward, I think, as well. Um, and obviously, I spoke to Michael, Michael uh, about him. He's, uh, he's really enjoying him, working with him. And uh, look, I think he'll, he's going to add something different to the squad, de definitely. And uh, for Jake, <clears throat> again, another player I worked with with the 21s. Um, it's been brilliant to see what, he, what he's done, you know, the last kind of year to 18 months. Um, going out to Europe, learning his trade, and then obviously going to leaving Palace, going to Lyon, and actually establish, establishing himself um, in a top flight league across Europe. So brilliant, great to see. And, He's uh, looked as there's, there's good competition in that area of the pitch as well, so um, he'll have he'll have lots of competition. But it'd be great for us to me as well, obviously uh, being part of the defensive uh, camp, shall we say, that um, we can help him improve even further over the over the two games coming up. At the other end of the spectrum, then Seamus Coleman is back in hmm. 35. Were there ever any were there any conversations about his future and retirement or anything like that? No, not with me. Anyway, no, it was, it was a great conversation to have um, because I know what it means to him. Obviously, playing for Ireland. That's in terms of the squad. I wanted a good uh, mix of that experience and uh, uh, obviously new players coming in too. But there's a there's plenty of experience in the squad too, which is going to be important. And uh, look, there was never, never any doubt. Uh, Seamus's commitment, that's for sure. Just on what you can achieve over the ten days or so you be together, you're obviously of that generation that you know, despite all you achieved at club level, you probably look back <coughs> on your Irish days and some of the best days. A lot of these young players who are up on sort of 20, 25 caps, they've never really had that positive experience yet. Mm. There's been a lot of very difficult days. There's been an awful lot of criticism. It's maybe not what they dreamed about when they were a kid when it comes to playing for Ireland. Is that something you think? You have to do some work on in terms of confidence levels. Ah, uh, look, no, I don't think so. In terms of look, the atmosphere every time I come in, whether it be a coach or a or a player, the atmosphere within an Irish camp is always very special, and it'll hopefully that will continue to be the case. And yeah, I know what you mean in terms of results-wise, but um, that happens at different phases in squads, building new squads, new players coming in, and obviously the amount of players that Stephen brought in. And gave them the opportunity to go and develop, and they've kicked on at their clubs as well. So it's great to be able to continue that and hopefully build with two positive results against Belgium and Switzerland. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, here you go. Thank there you go. Um, we're led to believe that the FBI have their man in terms of a permanent successor uh, to Stephen Kenny. Um, obviously, can't be announced until April. Have you had any conversations with, with that person? Has there been any input from them into this squad? No, I've just been talking to myself, so no. <laughs> No, there's been no no input from from anyone like that. Um, my full focus has just been on the two games, get, picking the squad, and uh, looking forward to a big challenge against Switzerland and Belgium. Belgium first up, obviously, and whatever happens, happens. That's just been so straightforward for me. Just fully focus on the two games, again. Yeah, yeah. Robbie Brady's back. Yeah, look, as I mentioned about the experience and the blend that's needed, and Robbie's uh, quality in terms of. Uh, 60 caps, uh, goal scoring player, great set pieces, um, and obviously he's back fit and being involved with Preston as well. So, um, look, it's it's important that you have that, as I mentioned, the blend in the squad. And Robbie certainly gives that in terms of the quality too. Yeah, can I ask about Tom Cannon as well? Was there any conversations between you guys? Was he considered for this 
squad. Yeah, a little bit. Look, he's Tom's concentrating on his on his club stuff. It's as simple as that. And uh, look, that we'll uh, that was it. Yeah. Uh, so do you worry that maybe he's not going to care for Ireland? Or? No, no, I don't. No, no worries like that at all. No worries like that. And then lastly, another Leicester player is Casey McAteer. Kind of yeah, he's just he's injured, unfortunately. Yeah. He's injured, and uh, look, it would have been uh, would have been a nice one, but uh, unfortunately, but he's just great, injured. Yeah, that, that, that's um, progressing very well. Ed? John, how are you? Um, hey, Ed. I was just looking at the squad um, and with the introduction of, of Sammy Smollett into the squad. Um, we're, very, we're very familiar with the rest of the forwards and what they bring to the squad. Very good range of, 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 of forward players. Just from Sammy's perspective, what sort of players do you think he links up best with? Like, is it speed players around him or is it bring another players into, into yeah look from what I've noticed in terms of watching Samuel the last couple of seasons in particular um, in a championship it's his absolute obviously every level he's gone to he seems to have obviously responded to it and uh, been able to cope with it no problem and been an important player and he's just grown and had that maturity now in his game and I think he's versatile in that sense too Um it won't be a problem to him whatever player he's maybe picked alongside or if he is picked that he can cope with that he'll bring an intelligence to his game that he's obviously developed over the last few years um, and that whether it be false positions he drifts in off the left drifts in off the right he can he can cope with any type of any type of strike partner or a, a front four combination or front three whatever it might be so he's very flexible in that and look it's uh, it's good that you have a player coming in scoring 27 goals, 21 in the league, you know, it's very important. And just in terms of your defensive unit, and you obviously come on from the defensive side of things, uh, trying to just obviously trying to read a bit into what the squad you've picked, and I know a lot of players are versatile, but sort of two full backs on each side, would it be fair to say you're, you're my favourite four, four at the back? No, well, look, it's a, it's a good option, yeah, it's a very good option, but we also have plenty of centre backs in the squad too. and. Um, whatever uh, shape or formation we come up with, it'll be very flexible. Even in terms of uh, whether you're building in a, you, you could have a back four, but you're building up in position in a three at the back. You can we can float back into it. Whether we have three at the back, the midfielders dropping in to help out. There's lots of flexibility in the squad, and that's that's key for us. Because look, the challenges we're going to face against Belgium and Switzerland, they will. They're obviously really getting close to planning and prepping for a European Championships too so we know we'll be facing a uh, real tough competition but one more excited about. Well, just, a, just a quick one about Robbie Brady, yeah. you mentioned his coming back with experience and his, his, his set piece and all that sort of stuff. He's also probably the, uh, had the biggest moment in you know international football for Ireland over the last, over the last decade. Was that important to get players like him back in, amongst the younger players to sort of to feed off a bit of that yeah, a little bit. Well, I won't say just for that, yeah. just for that reason. Um, it's because of his football ability, first and foremost. Um, I know he's obviously a brilliant character too, but uh, no, first and foremost, it was his football, football and ability, and uh, he's fitting well, and hopefully he gets uh, get some game time maybe at the weekend, and we see what happens from there. But no, he's as I mentioned, he can play left wing back, left back. Playing midfield, he's good versatility to him as well, so great to have him back in. Sean? Hi John, how's it going? Hi Sean. Two players have really productive loan spells, Adam Eden and Michael Johnson, come into this camp. Yeah, no, really, really buzzing to see how, to, how they've been getting on, obviously. Um, obviously, one leaving Celtic and one joining Celtic. And, um, but look, I spoke to the two of them, and they're really just they can't wait for the next game to come around whether it be club or international when you have uh, strike that type of form and uh, it's great to see and look it's uh, at different stages in a ca whether it be a campaign or friendlies or whatever games you have coming up you're going to have that in the squad you're going to have players obviously really buzzing at the clubs and other players maybe having a little tricky spell but that that's just natural and it's great to see because I know they're really good players ultimately and it's great to see uh, Mikey in particular. You know Adam can score goals. He's shown that already. But for Mikey as well to go to leave Celtic and get into West Brom, and to really have that impact he's had, it's uh, it's been great to see. No, Alan Brown, that's injury related. Yeah, he's going to have a obviously a, a minor procedure during the during the international window. And yeah, look, it's look, Alan's an absolute warrior. 
for his club and his country. So um, hopefully he'll be he'll be he'll be back very quickly. Just last month, this guy no no Kevin De Bruyne uh, against uh, next weekend against against Ireland. Uh, so I suppose your thoughts on that as well? Yeah, look, it's uh, it's one of those things. You know the Belgian squad, the quality they have, but. Look, Kevin is one of the best players, not only in the Premier League and around Europe. So, um, I'm sure lots of our lads would have been uh, enjoyed facing him as well. And but I think they'll they'll be up against good quality players, whoever Belgium pick. So, but the big thing for us is focusing on our, on ourselves. Yeah, we'll do a bit of work on what uh, Belgium might come up with on players. But um, if you focus too much in that, you kind of take your eye off the ball in terms of what we have to do as well. Okay. Uh, how do you see the goalkeeping situation? Yeah, no. Look, it's it's a brilliant, uh, healthy competition at the minute in that sense, and it's it's great to see Quivin getting that consistent run of games, and obviously that Gavin ha has had all season type of thing. So, you know, it's uh, it's a tricky one. Mark obviously was doing well at Stoke, and then obviously got called back and has been playing cup games uh, for Bournemouth. So, um, it's a really I remember thinking about it in the summer um, when you saw the, the the lads when we were away in um, in Turkey at the time that just the real depth of quality that they have and uh, look it's, a, it's going to be a tough decision it, who knows we'll, we'll get Belgium out of the way in terms of uh, um, picking one for that game and then we we'll see what happens after that but no it's a nice problem to have uh, we, I mean we've usually had a situation where this is established number one but we've seen recently some coaches start to say, start to argue that a goalkeeper is like any other position, and you can maybe pick a goalkeeper for one game and then a different goalkeeper for the next game. What's your opinion about that? I think the, th the big thing for me is the relationship that you build up with the team, the squad, so that unit of the goalkeeper and the, the, the back four, back five, whatever it could be. Um, that would be the key thing for me. As soon as you can get that relationship, you get a consistency to it. I think that's crucial in terms of a team being successful. Just one other thing to say, was Ryan Manning injured as well? Yeah, uh, it's one of them, he's been monitored, been monitored closely and there, there could be a chance for him to maybe uh, possibly come in later in the, in the, towards the second game, hopefully, but we wait, we wait and see. Thank you very much, Prince Huddle is in meeting room six.